We all know that the world's got some problems right now, even though life is good, particularly in Marin. We've got global warming that's out of control. We've got a, a geoengineering experiment that we've lost control of. So we know about global warming. We know about desertification. We know about diminishing water and the uh, melting of the Arctic. It all comes down to energy and how we use energy. And most of the energy we're using is fossil fuels. We've used a trillion barrels of oil equivalent in the last 200 years and put that into the atmosphere. What are the prospects? Where are we going with this? Uh, Kyoto essentially failed to change the direction of humanity. Copenhagen did as well. Well, you know there are solutions and the solutions are already there and they're already in front of us and they've been modeled by nature. And I can say with absolute confidence right now that we could halve the problem within a decade if we have the will. Because the biggest thing that we're doing for all of this energy that we're using, we're putting it into a bucket with holes in the bottom. We're wasting it. Humans don't like to sacrifice. That's probably the main reason that countries can't get together to agree on some plan that will solve our problems. So the whole world of science and technology is based on the premise that the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. Am I far enough forward? That's probably better. Is in a straight line. So if you want to get from there to there using the least amount of energy, you need to go in a straight line, which makes perfect sense. We're all, we all learnt that in school and all our plumbing is straight, buildings are straight, everything we build is pretty much built from straight surfaces. But if you look at nature, nature is extremely good at minimizing energy use. It's been evolving energy efficient systems for 15 billion years. And nature never uses a straight line. If you just think of the cardi human cardiovascular system, for instance, there's 60,000 miles of plumbing and the human heart and cardiovascular system is the most efficient system known to humans. 60,000 miles, not a single straight line. So nature's using one strategy to minimize energy and humans are ignoring it completely. And I'm going to show you a little DVD now that actually starts to explore what's possible. Most people think of nature's movements as chaotic. But there is a common shape underlying all of that chaos. This shape has been well known throughout human history. Early civilizations recognized that spiral shapes are common in nature and often use them as representations of creation, fertility, and divinity. In fact, the spiral is one of the most common symbols found throughout all ancient cultures. Now with the benefit of modern science, we can see that these spirals are everywhere, from the zipping and unzipping of DNA, to particle decay in quantum physics, to the growth patterns of every living thing, leaves, animal horns, sap veins and trees, seashells and rose petals. We used to believe the world was flat. We thought the sun went around the earth. We even thought that the stars were gods and heroes. Until we became aware of the natural laws of physics and chemistry that govern our universe as it spirals through space. What other discoveries can we make if we look deeply into nature? What solutions to the growing energy crisis are available to scientists and engineers who look with a new set of eyes? By observing natural fluid flow in all of its forms, we know that from the atomic level to the very largest structures in our universe, movement tends to follow the same path as the whirlpool you see when you pull the plug in your bathtub. This is the path of least resistance. If we want to use less or produce more energy, then we need to follow this path. So I grew up beside the beach in Australia, very fortunately, and uh, the water there is 
warm and clear. And I did a lot of diving. And one thing I noticed, in fact, I dived almost every day. And one thing I noticed is that seaweeds are quite fragile when you grab hold of them and you can break them off fairly easily and yet even in the wildest storms seaweeds don't break off. They have a strategy to reduce drag and friction and that's what we use most of our energy for um, on Earth. If we didn't have drag and friction we'd probably be able to cut our energy use down by about 98%. So nature has this marvelous strategy. A whirlpool, seashells, we see this right throughout the natural world. What I've discovered over the last 50 years is that all energy in our known universe moves through turbulence, and any physicist will acknowledge that. What is turbulence? But it's a collection of eddies or whirlpools that we see in the bath when we pull the plug. And nature uses this strategy exclusively. It's never used any other strategy since the dawn of time for moving energy around and moving fluids around. Science in the main is trying to suppress turbulence, trying to avoid turbulence, trying to get around turbulence, and nature uses it, actually uses it and exploits it. And even when we look at sap going up any plant is going up in exactly the same way as a whirlpool in your bathtub. Even in firestorms, when you light a candle and you see that flame coming off, it's always flickering and moving, it's never straight, right? Well, if you look really closely, and the next slide will show you, this is how heat moves, right? It doesn't move in straight chimneys like we build. So we see it from in every domain, and all of life starts in a liquid phase. So in its early stages, it takes on the geometry of water flow. And so every part of every living thing shows the geometry that you see in this whirlpool. But if we think of the cochlea of the ear, everybody's got an image of that. It's a spiraling shape. Well, it actually shares the same geometry as this. The curl of our eyelashes, the heart muscle, exactly this shape. And blood flows through the cardiovascular system this way. If nature's using this strategy and humans aren't using it anywhere, maybe we should really look closely at this. And quite a few years ago, I was able to freeze a whirlpool. If you imagine pulling that plug in your bath, there's your whirlpool. If you could freeze it, that's what you'd have. Well, it so happens that this looks like a lily from the garden. In fact, we have a wonderful x-ray of a lily, which will show this. So it's almost identical. Now, what does this mean? Okay, now I have this. And, you know, with four variables, this geometry, if we reverse engineer it, gives us the key to all movement in our known universe. We have it right here. This is nature's blueprint. This is what nature uses to make things work and to minimize energy. So what we've done with this is been able to create a plethora of different engineering solutions. This little thing goes in your water supply. In fact, we're in about 150 municipalities across America. This is the actual size that we put in a 5 million or a 10 million gallon tank. This is a human skin pore, micro uh, electron microscope photograph. We perspire in this shape. So given that, um, this little device goes in these water tanks and we rotate it with the power of a couple of light bulbs and we can turn 10 million gallons completely and get complete mixing and it reduces the amount of energy that municipalities are using to keep your water quality up. It reduces it by 85%. It also reduces the amount of chemicals that are going into your water supply by 85%. This is a dramatic effect. If I keep growing these shapes, I can get an infinite variety of devices. Just the same way that nature is using this to create an infinite variety of things on Earth and life forms, we can do this in engineering. This comes from exactly the same strategy, and this is a pump. And it's a pump that uses less energy than the best pumps in the world today, and you can pump fish through it, and it won't damage the fish. We've developed wind turbines. We have grants from the federal government. We have, I think, five or six at the moment. This is one of our most exciting things. The world currently spends nearly 30% of its electricity on refrigeration and air conditioning, right? And they're problematic things because they use a lot of energy, they're incredibly wasteful of energy, and 
And they're also using refrigerants, which are really bad for the ionosphere. This is the first new refrigeration cycle in 100 years. It's based on this. We've reduced the amount of energy of an air conditioner by 90%, and we don't use any refrigerants. So, um, thank you. Some of you may have seen that Tony Blair has just signed on with uh, our VC backer, which is uh, Coastal Ventures, um, to promote this and uh, half a dozen other technologies worldwide. But we've used this to do boats, boat hulls that are much more efficient, um, heat exchanges, it goes on and on and on. There's really nothing in the industrial world that we can't reduce the energy footprint of. And quite frankly, across the board, there is no problem in humanity getting to a 50% reduction in energy use in the next decade, two decades at the most. I have, I have absolute confidence in that, if the will is there. And it requires no sacrifice. This, this thing here replaces the whole refrigeration system in your refrigerator. It needs one more component with it, which is about as big as your fist, and that's it. So it's cheaper to build. It doesn't have a compressor. It's a, this is an inexpensive thing. It's about a third of the production cost. Nature is like that. It minimizes materials, it minimizes noise. It, the fans that we build, the wind turbines we build are much quieter. This device is much quieter than your refrigerator. Our atmosphere is in layers. And these layers, or thermoclines, are different densities of air and different particulate matter. And so we get these layers that actually stop proper circulation. You know the thermals that you hit when you're flying to New York or you see birds flying on? Well, these are upwellings that are huge ring vortices. They're like donuts. And that's nature's way. Oh, by the way, here we have the cochlea of your ear and there's a seashell. So these ring vortices, and a DNA molecule, these ring vortices are the way that nature uses to cool the atmosphere down. It takes hot surface heat, dumps it into the ionosphere, where you've got minus 60 degrees or more. What's happening with these thermoclines of pollution, those thermals are not penetrating to the ionosphere until nature solves the problem with Category 5 hurricanes and tornadoes, etc. That is nature's heat engine. That's nature's solution to it. And the incidence and the strength of those are increasing. Right? So what we're working on, and we're working with Autodesk and a number of universities across America, can we coax nature, just give it a little bit of a massaging, to break through these thermoclines and actually cool the Earth down? Now, we've modeled this, and it looks like it works. And it, the first thing we're looking at is creating rain with it. That's a whole different story. I won't belabor that right, won't labor that right now. But this is happening in Marin, and it is advanced, and it is working. So look at this space. So thank you very much. <laughs>